The final major snapshot for the Minecraft 1.21 update has been released. You know, I would have thought we'd have a name for this update by now. While we still might get a few small additions before the update's full release, it appears that we're finally finished with the major additions. 24W13A brought a ton of new features into the game. It added three new mace enchantments, one of which even allowing you to bounce off anything you hit. More importantly for this video though, there are five new potions that were added. These effects range from giving the infected a 5% chance to spawn a silverfish when hit, okay, to even spawning cobwebs when a mob dies, finally making them a renewable resource. But instead of looking at these new effects, I want to take a look at the one potion for an effect that already existed. The ominous bottle was added in the snapshot, which is now the only way to obtain the bad omen effect. On top of that, the effect now works in both villages and the neutral chambers, changing both of them in their own unique way. This addition made me realize that the bad omen effect has a lot of untapped potential that I think could be greatly expended upon with the addition of this potion. After all, there are much more than just two structures. I'm sure we're all just dying to see how the bad omen effect could affect the desert well. So in this video, we're going to be doing two things, sort of similar to my previous mob vote video. First, we're going to cover what all the ominous potion currently does in case you're not caught up with the snapshots, and then we're going to go through several of the game's other structures and discuss how I think they could be improved with the special bad omen events. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. At 200k, I'm ranking every 2D Mario level, and let's jump right in. Alright, so how does the Ominous Potion actually work? Well, in previous updates, the way you got the Bad Omen effect was simply by killing a raid captain. This could honestly be a bit annoying because if you lived near a village and didn't feel like doing a raid, then you'd have to find some indirect way to kill any pillagers that spawn nearby. Personally, I like to burn them alive. With this update though, the raid captains will now drop the Ominous Bottle when killed. So now you can freely kill any pillagers you see, and when you're finally prepared to do a raid, you can drink the potion and enter a village. That makes things so much easier for the standard player. I will say though, it is a bit of a double-edged sword. Now that you can't just get Bad Omen by killing the raid captain, raid farms are now significantly worse than they were before, since the player now has to keep drinking the potion. Honestly though, that's probably a fair change, because raid farms were a bit overpowered. So overall, I really like what they did with this potion in terms of raids. However, villages are now no longer the only place where bad omen is effective, and this is where the video's main topic really comes through. 1.21's brand new trial chambers will now change if the player uses the bad omen effect while inside. You can use the ominous potion given to you by raid captains, or you can get them from the trial chamber itself. The vault will have an 18.6% chance of giving you an ominous bottle when opened. Also, I think it's worth noting now that these don't really work like regular potions. You can't make them into splash or lingering variants, and they can also stack. Plus, when you drink them, you don't get the bottle back. I guess you just eat it or something. When the effect is applied, any spawner that sees you will turn into an ominous spawner. Ooh. This will obviously make them more difficult, spawning in more and harder mobs. For example, any mob that can wear armor will now spawn with it, but don't get too excited to steal because they won't drop it. Okay, well, they drop it right now, but they said that's a bug. On top of that, each spawner will also spew out a projectile, most of the time being a lingering potion. You better watch out for that silverfish effect. If you manage to defeat all the mobs from an ominous spawner, you'll have a 30% chance to obtain the brand new ominous trial key. Besides looking like the most messed up wither you've ever seen, these are used to unlock the ominous vault. Essentially, they allow you to get better items more frequently than in the normal vault. So if you really want to demolish your enemies with a mace, the ominous vault is your best bet of getting it. So with that being said, Bad Omen has two wildly different effects depending on which setting it was used in. In fact, the Bad Omen effect will actually transform into a different effect depending on which structure you go to. So in a village, it will become Raid Omen, and in a Trial Chamber, it'll be Trial Omen. The particle effects on both are skulls, isn't that spooky? But now that we know what the Bad Omen effect does, why should it stop there? Minecraft has 26 total structures, so while not all of them would work with Bad Omen, sorry another fossil fans, I do think a large number of them could benefit from special ominous events. So for the rest of this video, I want to take a look at several of the game's other structures and discuss some of my ideas on how they could change. Now, I don't just want Bad Omen to act as a sort of bad luck effect, because that already exists, they just don't use it. Well, yes, I do think Bad Omen should make the structure harder, there needs to be a reason for the player to want to have Bad Omen there in the first place. While yes, the trial chamber becomes much harder, you can also get better items if you manage to win. So I want each of these to have a sort of similar risk and reward balance. So with that being said, let's jump right into some of my ideas. I say it makes sense to start with the game's very first structure, the dungeon. Okay, well technically these aren't considered structures, but what what is that hairbrine? Did you guys see that? I think for such a simple structure, a simpler effect makes sense. This will act somewhat similar to the ominous spawner. Under the bad omen effect, mobs from dungeons would be able to spawn more frequently. Additionally, zombies and skeletons will spawn with more armor on and more powerful weapons. Baby zombies will also be a bit more common. As for spiders, they'd be able to spawn with potion effects more frequently, which is something the mob can actually do in hard difficulties. Obviously, all of this would make taking on the dungeon more difficult, but in exchange, you'd get XP much faster and a larger amount of mob drops. Yeah, like I said, this one is definitely a smaller change, but I think it fits the simple nature of the 
structure. I think it'd also be cool if ominous bottles could sometimes spawn in dungeon chests to go along with this change. All right, the next structure I want to take a look at is the Woodland Mansion. This structure has been in need of an update for a long time. While it does look pretty cool, there's very little reason to seek them out due to the loot being mediocre at best. When it was first added to the game, it was the only place where Vindicators and Evokers could spawn, but with raids, it's since lost that exclusivity. But what if we could use the same bad omen that ruined the mansion and use it to make it better? In fact, I think we could do this by giving the mansion a brand new exclusive mob, the Illusioner. If you didn't know, the Illusioner is actually a hidden mob that you can only access with commands. This Illager will clone itself four times to shoot at the player. It'll also affect them with blindness, making the surrounding area too dark to see through. This is a really cool and interesting mob, so it's a shame they aren't accessible in survival. So I think it'd be cool if there was a new room that would generate in every woodland mansion, and while it would be empty at first, drinking the ominous bottle would cause the Illusioner to reveal itself. I think it would also be nice if the Illusioner was made a bit harder to fit more in line with this new mini boss status. Now just seeing the mob here would be cool, but there also needs to be a reason to fight him in the first place. There are a few options I think they could go with here. First would be to let them drop an exclusive item that lets blindness potions finally be brewable. I like that would be all too helpful, but... The second thing they could do is make them drop an exclusive armor trim, similar to how the Elder Guardians drop the Tide trim. This trim could make armor replicate the Illusioner's pajamas with the ore being sprinkled across the armor. Third, they could just come up with something entirely new, but whatever they decide, I think this would be a fun ominous effect that could greatly improve Woodland Mansions. Let's run through a few basic ones real quick. I think it'd be nice if the ominous bottle up the spawn rates of mobs around the infected player, and focused on making these mobs stronger as well. While it would be cool if that just applied to normal gameplay, if they want to keep this item's usage exclusive to structures, there's still plenty of scenarios where it would be quite helpful. Most notably to me would be in Ocean Ruins, which as you may or may not know, have drowned spawn around them. Now, I've mentioned this several times in the past, but getting tridents in Java is an absolute nightmare. Not only do drowns spawn pretty rarely, especially compared to Bedrock, but on Java, they can only drop tridents if they're holding one. Only 6.25% of drowns spawn with a trident, and only 11.5% of those drop the trident if you're using Looting 3. Yeah, you're gonna be spending a long time underwater. So I think to counteract that a little bit, drinking an ominous bottle will up the spawn rates of not only drowned, but drowns with tridents around Ocean Ruins. Drowns with tridents are pretty strong, so it would be very risky, but it would also be quite helpful in getting a trident more efficiently. I know I would definitely love to see this added, because grinding for a trident is one of my least favorite parts of starting a new world. There are a few other structures that could tweak mob spawning, but they wouldn't really be that exciting. I couldn't really think of anything else for these structures, so it's the best I got. Not that I'm planning to cover every structure in this video. Sorry, Ruined Portal fans. Desert Temples could have an increased husk spawn rate with the effect. Not really something you'd ever need, but it could be a cute little easter egg. Witch Huts could also increase the spawn rate of witches while a player has bad omen. I feel like there's probably something more creative they could do here, but I'm a little stupid. For mine shafts, they could increase the spawn rate of cave spiders from spawners, similar to the dungeons we mentioned before. I also think cave spiders spawn during this potion's duration should also come with the webbing effect, which can make navigation more difficult and give the player a reason to use the potion as they may want more cobwebs. Finally, for this mob spawning section, I think it'd be funny if in Stronghold, Silverfish would automatically break out of infested blocks even if you don't mind them. This one is basically just completely useless, I just think it'd be funny. Speaking of the end though, while I couldn't really think of any good ideas for end cities, my brother did come up with a fun idea revolving around the Ender Dragon. Make sure to thank him by calling him a loser in the comments. His idea was to have Bad Omen affect the dragon when it respawns, so if you drink the potion and then place the crystals to spawn it, it would cause the fight to get slightly more difficult. His idea was to have every tower now have iron bars around it, which could make the fight pretty interesting. The dragon could also get new attacks and more health, but that's more optional. If you manage to defeat this harder Ender Dragon, you'd be rewarded with more XP than a respawn dragon would normally give, but also another dragon egg, finally making this renewable. If they want to keep the dragon egg to one per world though, then I think the dragon dropping an elytra could be a good replacement. I've already mentioned in my vault video why elytras are a nightmare in multiplayer due to their limited supply, so I think this would be a good way to make it renewable and an interesting challenge as well. Yeah, this isn't a structure thing, but I really like the idea. They could even come up with something with the wither too, but at the moment I couldn't really think of anything. I mean, I guess they could bring over the bedrock wither. Please don't. One of the game's other bosses are the Elder Guardians, and I think their ocean monuments could get a small tweak too. I'm sure this one is kind of obvious, but I think allowing more Elder Guardians to spawn while under the effect of this potion would be nice. It would let sponges finally be renewable, and I guess in turn the Tide Armor Trim as well. I know this may not be really the most exciting change, but I'm sure some people would really get some good uses out of this. You never know when you might need to infect someone with mining fatigue. The last two structures I want to take a look at though are probably the biggest, or at the very least most important. Let's take a look at the one I have the least cohesive idea for, the Ancient City. Right away, I knew exactly what I wanted the end result to be, to finally open that portal thing in the center. <laughs> I mean, they are 100% planning something with this. Now, of course, we don't know what it will lead to yet, but I would love it if it was a new dimension of some kind. Whatever they put behind it, I'm sure is going to be worth going to, so making it lock behind some sort of bad omen challenge could be really cool. But my struggle was figuring out exactly what that challenge would be. I mean, making it so only one sound would spawn the warden could be cool, but that wouldn't really be much of a challenge if you just drink the potion while you're at the portal. The best thing I could think of is having, say, four things spawn around the city, and you have to either mine or activate them all for the portal to open. However, you have to do this while under the bad omen 
an effect, which will spawn the word in after only one sound is made. If you exit the city or let the effect run out, you'd have to restart the challenge. I think that could be pretty fun and intense, though that is just my idea, and I'm sure they could come up with something better. Point is, I'd love for Bad Omen to cause some sort of event here that opens the portal. But as for the final structure I want to talk about in this video, we have the Bastions. Now you're gonna have to bear with me on this one since this sort of covers the ground of two previous videos. First off, it's time to complain about this thing again. <laughs> The Netherite Upgrade Template is one of my most hated features due to it locking Netherite Armor and Tools behind a resource that only spawns in a structure. While that's perfectly fine in single player, it's really annoying in multiplayer since people can take all the templates for themselves. It's made especially bad by the fact that they only have a 10% chance to spawn in most Bastion chests. In my Vault video, I suggested they could maybe have an exclusive Vault to Bastions that would give the player a template. Even if it's just in the Treasure Bastion, this would fix the multiplayer issue since the Vaults allow multiple players to get the loot. But that brought up the question, how would you get the key for it? My suggestion was allowing piglins to barter for it and for piglin brutes to drop it, but I think the ominous bottle has provided for a better solution. I think we can now keep the key exclusive to piglin brutes. The problem with doing that before was that piglin brutes don't spawn infinitely, but what if they could under the effects of bad omen? If you drink the ominous bottle while in a bastion, piglin brutes will spawn like crazy, making it extremely dangerous, but opening up the opportunity to get a key if the bastion was previously raided. Maybe this could also make normal piglins attack you regardless of if you've aggroed them. I think this would be a really good way to finally fix the netherite upgrade template and make it have an interesting challenge too. Piglin Brutes also don't have to drop the key 100% of the time, and if they want to make it so they only drop it during the ominous event, I wouldn't mind that either. And this is just one example of how they could go about it. They can even add a new boss here for all I care, just as long as it makes the Netherite Upgrade template accessible for everyone. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you a big Jungle Temple fan and hate me for not making an ominous event for it? Let me know in the comments. I'm really excited for the potential this effect has, along with just this update in general. I think it's a massive improvement over both 1.20 and 1.19, so I'm really excited to start a new world with it soon. And I'm of course looking forward to ranking all of its features like I did for 1.20. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.